Hi everyone, welcome to the second season of Clinical Tips. This episode is part of a mini-series on diabetes. As in previous episodes, let's start by imagining a clinical scenario. Imagine that Miss Avery, a 46-year-old woman, has come in for a regular clinical check-in during one of your community-based rotations. Her main complaint is frequent urination. Her past medical history is positive for two episodes of vulvovaginitis in the past year, and her family history is positive for diabetes and hypertension, both from her mom's side. A physical examination shows no abnormalities except for a body mass index or BMI of 31. Based on her clinical history and risk factors, you're suspecting type 2 diabetes as the most likely diagnosis. So. How will you confirm your diagnosis? According to the 2021 American Diabetes Association guidelines, diabetes can be diagnosed in four different ways based on plasma glucose levels. One, a fasting plasma glucose test known as FPG. This test has to be done with no caloric intake in the last eight hours and a level of or above 126 milligrams over deciliter indicates diabetes. Two, an oral glucose tolerance test known as OGTT, which is done using a 75 grams glucose load dissolved in water. Normal results should be less than 140 milligrams over deciliter after two hours, while a result of or above 200 milligrams over deciliter indicates diabetes. Three, a glycated hemoglobin test known as A1C which measured the average blood glucose level over the past three months. A result equal or above 6.5% will be considered diabetes. However, it can be affected by conditions that increase the red blood cell turnover, such as pregnancy, hemodialysis, or hemoglobinopathies. Lastly, a random plasma glucose test off or above 200 mg over deciliter with typical symptoms of hyperglycemia will also indicate diabetes. It is important to mention that the first three test diagnostic criteria require two abnormal test results to confirm a diabetes diagnosis. The two tests can be done on the same sample or on two separate samples and using a combination of the same or different testing method. This can be a little confusing, but just remember, Two positive tests equal one diabetes diagnosis. Turning back to the case of our patient, we ran a FPG and an A1C test. Both reveal abnormal elevated levels, effectively confirming type 2 diabetes. Further evaluation of diabetes complications and comorbidities should be performed during this first visit. And a patient-centered treatment and management plan should be discussed and started. I hope you have learned something new today and see you in the next videos of this mini-series.